Welcome to our show, Experts Speak. Today we have with us Dr. Deepa Jayaram. She is a renowned consultant in nephrology and transplantology. Today she will talk to us about common ailments of the kidney and associated illnesses. Doctor, tell us, what is glomerulonephritis, nephritis and nephrotic syndrome? What causes this condition? Glomerulonephritis by definition means a condition that uh, wherein there is inflammation or an attack on the filters of the kidney. Now to give you a little bit of an idea, uh, the functioning unit in each kidney is called a nephron and that nephron consists of a filter called the glomerulus uh, from where the blood passes through and gets filtered almost like a, a strainer you know so it gets filtered and all the waste uh, materials gets filtered out of the blood and enters into the um, tubes. Now from the filter it goes on to the tubes wherein different changes are made to the composition and finally it uh, is thrown out as urine. So any in condition wherein there is an attack and inflammation of the kidney filters is termed as glomerulonephritis. It is also one of the common causes of uh, kidney failure in our country. Um, you can divide glomerulonephritis into essentially three forms. One is called focal nephritic, by uh, name it means that a small portion of the glomerulus is affected and these patients generally may not even have any symptoms, um, they may occasionally present with uh, blood in the urine but in general their kidney function tends to be preserved. Uh, again there are many causes for this. Second form would be something called diffuse uh, nephritic wherein multiple uh, filters of the kidney are attacked and uh, uh, a large area of the kidney filter is attacked by this uh, uh, either an immune process or an infectious process because of which there are a lot of changes in terms their kidney function starts to get deranged. They may have uh, blood and protein leakage in the urine and uh, different symptoms which I will come to later. The third variety is called nephrotic. Uh, by nephrotic syndrome what I mean is uh, here there is some problem with the f uh, membrane of the kidney filters wherein there is a lot of leakage of protein from the blood into the urine. Normally the urine should not have protein but because of some abnormality in the filter there is an excessive leakage of protein into the uh, urine and si simultaneously with this there are other symptoms that the patient faces for example he starts noticing swelling. Swelling may be all over the body especially around the eyes, puffiness of the face, uh, swelling of the feet, the hands. In addition the urine may be found to be very frothy or foamy because of a lot of uh, protein that is being leaked. Uh, there may or may not be decrease in the urine output uh, and the kidney function tends to be either normal or slowly de uh, it may get deranged depending upon the cause of the uh, nephrotic syndrome. So what are the symptoms of glomerulonephritis? Generally um, the symptoms of glomerulonephritis include um, the patient may notice changes in the urine color, uh, there may be blood in the urine which may look frankly uh, reddish or it may also turn pink or brown. Uh, the urine output may gradually start to decrease. Uh, in addition patient may notice uh, um, a lot of swelling over the body because of retention of all the fluids uh, and the extra salt. Um, in terms of how you pick this condition up, um, the blood pressure of the patient may be very high, this may be a new finding. Secondly, if you look at the urine, that is uh, the key factor to kind of uh, 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 suspect that the patient has glomerulonephritis. You will find blood in the urine, uh, you will find protein in the urine. If it is nephrotic syndrome, you may only find excessive protein, you may not find blood in the urine. And when you look at the urine under the microscope, you may see certain abnormalities in the RBCs or the red blood cells in the urine, which is specifically called as a cast. And that uh, is kind of uh, um, very significant for a glomerulonephritis. Ideally, your uh, a nephrologist would undertake a kidney biopsy uh, which will diagnose glomerulonephritis because it will help in classifying what is a ki kind of glomerulonephritis uh, subsequent to which the treatment can be uh, offered to the patient. Um, so in terms of how, what are the causes of glomerulonephritis, there are varying causes. Um, sometimes infections can do it. For example, in children, one of the most uh, frequent causes of glomerulonephritis is a condition called 
post streptococcal glomerulonephritis usually there is a bacteria called streptococcus which can cause sore throat and it can also cause some skin lesions uh, and sometimes uh, when this kind of spreads and the toxins from the bacteria go on uh, into the blood stream it can cause an attack into the kidney and lead to a condition called glomerulonephritis um, uh, there can be other infections like viral infections, hepatitis C virus, hepatitis B virus, both of these can cause glomerulonephritis. In addition, there are some autoimmune conditions uh, wherein the body's own immune system turns on against you and this uh, fight goes on uh, in the kidney and the uh, immune mediators are all deposited in the kidney leading to damage to the kidney filters. A standing example of this autoimmune uh, cause would be a condition called lupus or systemic lupus erythematosus. Um, there are certain malignancies can, that can do this, there are certain drugs that can cause nephrotic syndrome, uh, for example painkillers can do that, certain antibiotics can do that, uh, certain toxins like cocaine etc can uh, do this. So uh, depending upon the presentation and a detailed history from the patient, the doctor can usually figure out what is the cause of the glomerulonephritis and they will order certain extra tests and then in all likelihood undertake a kidney biopsy to uh, de definitively diagnose it. How do you treat it? Um, you have to first treat the underlying cause. If there is an offending drug that's being taken, take it out like a painkiller or certain uh, you know uh, antibiotics. You have to uh, make sure that the patient stops taking them. Secondly, if there is uh, infection like uh, either a bacterial infection, so a streptococcal infection, immediate uh, use of antibiotics is uh, required so that uh, this infection can be uh, subdued and the same attack process on the kidney can be quietened. Um, most of the time the doctors will incorporate medications called diuretics. These are agents which will increase the flow of urine uh, through the kidneys um, and this may be required because the patient is having a lot of swelling over the body and to kind of reduce the swelling and to reduce the blood pressure diuretics may be prescribed um, and uh, depending upon what the cause of the glomerulonephritis is sometimes uh, certain agents like steroids uh, may be utilized for treating this condition. So just like steroids are incorporated certain other immunosuppressive medications may be required to uh, quieten this injury on the uh, glomerulus um, and in some conditions there is a, a procedure called plasma phoresis uh, which is undertaken wherein uh, the plasma contains of your body is removed and replaced with fresh plasma so that all the toxins which are present in the plasma of your own body which is attacking the kidney gets removed and replaced by fresh plasma. Um, eventually if your uh, glomerulonephritis is severe enough to cause uh, uh, end stage kidney disease then you may even have to take the patient on to dialysis and subsequently your kidney transplantation.